the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So dear friends, a very happy Easter. As we gather, let us uh, call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this tremendous sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have faithfully sinned in, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant we pray that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth, and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses. God had, sorry, certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now, we are those witnesses we have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us pro to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord for he is good for his love has no end let the sons of Israel say his love has no I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a mother in our eyes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. A reading from Saint, letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must 
look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died. And now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all rise for the sequence. been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast then in the The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. 
She saw that a stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, dear friends, in the last uh, three days, we have come through the drama and the anxiety of Holy Thursday night with betrayals, arrests, and denials. Then, this long night of torture and suffering. On Good Friday, Jesus is dragged through the streets of Jerusalem to be crucified on Calvary. Then, hours of agony and strung up on a cross as a common criminal. And finally, death seemed to be a welcome reprieve from such agonizing humiliation and torture. And then the church had a very quiet Saturday morning. It was silent. And now, in the silence of Easter morning, we are confronted with an empty tomb. It does, you know, seem like a bit of an anticlimax after all the drama of the last few days. Uh, all, all we could show for is an empty tomb. Out of a place of death and decay, of failed promises and poverty, Jesus steps out. He steps out into the light of Easter morning. Now, one line that stands, uh, stand out, stands out for me uh, in today's gospel is this line, the last line. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture, that he must rise from the dead. You know, uh, as an afterthought, in hindsight, we might think it's strange. But, you know, if you have ne never had someone rising from the dead, the scripture can say all at once about resurrection. It's a, it's a concept. It's an idea. It's an aspiration. So the scriptures have been prophesying, have been saying that the Messiah would rise from the dead. He would suffer, but he would rise on the dead. But it didn't matter to them. They could not conceive that Jesus would rise from the dead. Now, the fact of this one line, that he must rise from the dead, underpins the very existence of the Christian faith and the church. Because if Jesus did not rise from the dead, there would be no Christianity and there would be no church, isn't it? The disciples who had abandoned him would have gone on with their life gone back to fishing, you know, travelled somewhere else, gone off away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem was too much to bear. You know, I suspect, like the apostles, we too at times, we struggle to understand that Jesus must rise from the dead. 
I wonder, dear friends, are we able to say with conviction, with certainty, that we believe in the historical fact of the resurrection? Because it makes all the difference. It does. Do we believe in this historical fact? Peter and the rest of the apostles who abandoned Jesus at the first sign of danger, remember that? At the house of Caiaphas, Peter said, denied Jesus three times. None of them were at the foot of the cross, except John with the mother of Jesus. Right? Where were the rest of the men? By the way, it was the women that stood at the foot of the cross. Okay, so the men were hopeless. <laughs> they just abandoned, totally abandoned. So, dear friends, you look at the apostles who were afraid of all this, they would not have given up their lives subsequently if not for the fact of the resurrection. Almost all of them died for the faith. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded, you know, a, a, new, a late addition to the apostles. And every single apostle except John, the evangelist, everyone else died for the faith. You know, Scripture itself did not prepare nor convince the apostles that Jesus must rise from the dead. Rather, the facts, the historical facts, carried this conviction of the resurrection. And for this reason, dear friends, every year on Easter Sunday, its mysteries of the resurrection renews the church. This morning, the, the church is full. It's wonderful. And I think Holy Family is renewed and refreshed in its faith. This is what it means for us to come to Easter morning, to church, that we renew our faith, what it means for us to be Christian. So we go back to ground zero. Like I say, the empty tomb is this predominant image on Easter Sunday. So I'd like to go back to ground zero, to this empty tomb of our faith. Here, before the empty tomb, the church sings her Alleluia. Let me give you a bit of an archaeological uh, trivia. You know, when post-resurrection, Christianity was seen as subversive, and it went underground uh, in the Roman Empire, right? So, but the Christians were still visiting this tomb of Jesus. So Emperor Hadrian decided to destroy the Christian faith by building a pagan temple over this tomb of Jesus. Now, what he did was actually to preserve it, right? Because you build this huge pagan structure over the tomb, he did not flatten, he just built over it. You inevitably preserve this historical fact. And then when Rome became Christian, after the baptism of Constantine, he tore it down and commissioned the building of the Holy Sepulchre. And so we have it today. We have it today. Of course, Holy Sepulchre had been destroyed and rebuilt, destroyed and rebuilt, but the tomb remained. The Franciscans, we have been there 800 years. From the Crusades, through the Ottoman, through First World War, Second World War, and today. Two, three years ago, uh, we are the custodians of the shrine, together with the co-owners, the Greek Orthodox, Armenians, and Copts. We decided to restore the tomb of Jesus. Uh, it, uh, National Geographic took, uh, took a film and uh, made a documentary of it. They lifted the marble slab over this tomb a 16th century marble slab and what they discovered on the bare rock surface were the stains of the body of Jesus. The stains. Remember on Good Friday, they rushed because they had no time with uh, approaching uh, Passover. So Nicodemus had about 100 pounds of spices for the embalming. They quickly prepared the body, left it there and Mary Magdalene was going to come back on Easter morning, on Sunday morning, after Passover, to fulfill the ritual cleaning and preparation for proper burial. 
So what was left there on Good Friday through Saturday were the stains. And so today, 2024, we continue to have that. So archaeology, archaeology strips back the layers of history to ground zero. Today, the church celebrates this empty tomb to remind us of the fact, historical fact, of the resurrection. What does it mean for us? Funny enough, dear friends, it was not the scriptures that convinced the disciples about Jesus. Rather, it was the encounter with the risen Lord that made all the difference. After the resurrection, they had a meal with him. Jesus prepared breakfast for them by the Lake of Galilee. Thomas put his fingers into the wounds of Jesus. These personal encounters made all the difference. In a way, what Scripture could not do, the personal encounter with the risen Lord made all the difference. So for us too, dear friends, if you struggle a bit with Scripture, it's understandable. So did the disciples. But let us pray for the grace of the encounter with the risen Lord. We pray that this empty tomb will give us a grace to know the risen Lord in our lives. Let us pray that the Easter grace may bring life and vitality to the areas of our life that might seem to be going through a Good Friday. Perhaps let us find hope, Easter hope, that the disappointments of life within it, within this empty tomb, holds a promise of the possibility of life, of new life, of eternal life. So may our Eucharist today, dear friends, as we celebrate, which is the body of the risen Lord, feed us, all of us, with fullness of life. Let us now arise for the renewal of our baptismal promises. So, dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, dear friends, I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
As we celebrate today the freedom and joy brought about by the resurrection of Jesus, let us raise our petitions with confidence to God, our Father. <coughs> our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, our clergy and laity that we will recommit to building God's church on earth and courageously testify to the Easter miracle. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they will be responsible stewards of all God's gifts and lead with fairness, humility, mercy, and kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick, the suffering, and those in need, that they will receive God's Lord's comfort and help through the actions of their communities. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. for our neophytes, that they will grow in faith by continuing to walk in God's light and treasuring the His holy sacraments. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer for us parishioners, that we will join in Christ's mission to save souls by actively participating in the ministries and outreach efforts of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, help us to live in a light of the risen Christ and to share this light with the world. May his resurrection renew our faith, strengthen our love for one another, and lead us to our eternal home with you. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Praise sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your temple, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, 
Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let the service come and inform by divine teaching we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.